News Donovan Moodley, convicted for the kidnapping and murder of Lee Matthews, is applying for parole. The Matthews family expected to make representations. Moodley has served less than 17 years for kidnapping the Bond University student in 2005. Lee Matthews' parents doubt whether Moodley has shown any remorse. Senior reporter Barry Bateman following developments, joining us in the studio now for the latest. Good afternoon, Barry. Tell us why are the Matthews family opposing uh, Moodley's release? Good uh, afternoon, Dan. Well, the main reason is a question of remorse. If you're going to be granted parole, there are certain requirements. As a convicted, in this case, murderer, uh, you need to show certain steps, certain part of the process. You remember being incarcerated for any period of time. It's not just about punishment. There's also uh, rehabilitation. And part of that process, you must show remorse. Well, the Matthews family, uh, Rob and Sharon Matthews, the parents uh, of Lee Matthews, believe that this is not the case from uh, Donovan Mudley. Uh, part of this reason is we just got to look back as recently as 2017, Jonathan Moodley went all the way up to the Constitutional Court uh, challenging his uh, conviction and sentence. Uh, despite him having um, admitted to the crime in a confession uh, all those years ago, uh, he was then challenging it and coming up with various different versions. Well, you can't exactly show remorse if you're not the type of person who at first admits to the crime and then you need to reflect on what you have done and why it was wrong. These are among the submissions that they're going to make. Also part of the reason is that they have submitted a victim's uh, impact statement. This is the impact the crime has had on the relatives of the murdered victim. In this case, uh, Rob and Sharon Matthews going into detail of how this has changed their lives. They are still going through therapy to this day, uh, trying to deal with the loss of Lee, despite it being almost two decades. Um, you know, it, it, it's a long process. They talk about the daughter, the older sister of Lee, how she is still struggling, even a mother herself herself now, uh, just her children going to school and the, the worry that she has having flashbacks from the time that Lee was kidnapped. So it's these kind of submissions that they've made to the parole board on the grounds that they do not want um, Donovan Moodley to be granted parole. Okay, I understand this is just the start of the process, Barry. So what's next? It is. It's quite a long process. And I, 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 another high-profile matter I think we can refer to as Janusz Volus, uh, the murderer of uh, SACP's uh, Chris Harney. Uh, he was convicted of murder as well. So in a case like this, uh, the matter has to go all the way up through a significant process. It's not decided on at the level of the parole board. I think I just want to reflect on so why is Donovan Mudley eligible for parole? Well, he served two-thirds of his life sentence. Uh, he served 17 years, so he's eligible to apply. Of course, that's not any guarantee that he'll get it. Uh, but we were outside the Johannesburg Correctional Center earlier today with the Correctional Services spokesperson addressing this issue of what happens next. Take a listen. As Correctional Services, we can confirm that there is a session underway where um, uh, Donovan Moodley, who is serving a life sentence, and the Matthews family, who are the victims to an offence that uh, Mr. Moodley committed uh, in 2004, are doing what we call oral representation. Um, uh, the session is, uh, is on. We are hoping that it shall be concluded today. But this will not mean that it's, it is the end of it, because after this, the parole board will have to put together everything. Uh, that profile will then have to be submitted before the National Council for Correctional Services, which will still have to dissect each and every piece, every statement in there, and make necessary recommendations, which will then go to the minister for the final decision to be made. Why is it so? Here we're dealing with someone who was sentenced to life, and all lifers decisions go through that rigorous process so that at the end of the day, should a person be placed out, you know, we know exactly that we have done everything possible and that the risk is indeed uh, diminished and that that person will not be a danger to society. Hence, it's important that it has to go through all these phases so that at least as correctional services will know that whatever that we had to do in terms of rehabilitating the inmate and processes in place in, processing, uh, in, in, in taking that person through have been done. So as a department, we'll allow these hearings to go all their way. In case they are, we don't get to finish them today, we'll not rush it. We'll allow it to be done so that at the end of the day, uh, justice can be served for all parties. Sounds like quite a process there, Barry. Any indication about the timeline? Uh, unfortunately not, uh, Dan, and that's the difficult one for the parents as well. They've gone through a lot. Even the, the fact that they have to be at this parole hearing, they say, is a concern for them. They'll have to wait at least a few months before they'll get an outcome.